Hi, my name is Simeon, and today I would like to present to you an internal project Tweak's data team has been working on for quite a while now. This project is called Chainsail, and it is a web service that we hope makes sampling multimodal distributions a little bit easier. Before we start, let me point out that to understand what Chainsay really is about, it is very useful to have some fundamental knowledge of uh, Markov chain Monte Carlo methods. And maybe you should have also worked with uh, probabilistic programming libraries such as PyMC3 or STAN before. If you want to learn more about MCMC sampling first, feel free to have a look at Tweak's blog post series, in which we discuss in four blog posts from basic to advanced a range of important Markov chain Monte Carlo algorithms, some of which are actually used in chain sale. So let's dive right in. Now chain sale is supposed to make multimodal distributions more easy to sample. First off, what are multimodal distributions? If you have worked with probability distributions before, you are probably familiar with unimodal distributions such as, for example, this guy here. This is a beta distribution, I believe, and it essentially has one bump, meaning one region with high probability mass. But sometimes we do have distributions that have two modes, two bumps, two regions with high probability. For example, here I have a little Gaussian mixture distribution, and that mixture distribution has two modes. And if we want to sample from a multimodal, or in this case, bimodal distribution, such as this one, we would like to get samples that have probability mass in both of those modes. Why is sampling multimodal probability distributions difficult? Well, in probabilistic programming libraries such as STAN or PyMC3, arbitrary or almost arbitrary probability distributions can be sampled using Markov chain Monte Carlo methods. These methods rely on an iterative process that step by step, via random small perturbations, discovers the parameter space. This kind of random process often has difficulties crossing regions of low probability. For example, you can imagine that your Markov chain starts in here in the left mode of this bimodal distribution, and it wanders around in here, in here, in here, and it will take the Markov chain a very long time to eventually escape this mode and cross over in the other mode to sample it correctly and then cross back at one point. And this means that for highly multimodal distributions in which the modes are separated by large regions of low probability, sampling multimodal distributions with a single or only a couple non-communicating Markov chains can be very, very inefficient and there is very little guarantee that eventually you're going to sample correctly your probability distribution. Now, how does Chainsail help? Chainsail implements on the cloud an algorithm called replica exchange, or also known as parallel tempering, that is quite well known in the community I did my research in, that is in computational structure biology and biomedical simulation. Simulating not only one copy of your probability distribution, but several that are increasingly flatter and flatter, meaning that in those flatter copies, the Markov chain can escape more easily from modes. But these flatter copies communicate, and that way the non-flattened version of the probability distribution can be helped to be sampled more exhaustively. For details, please have a look at our Replica Exchange blog post. Unfortunately, the Replica Exchange and Paratempering algorithm has a few drawbacks. One of them is that it usually requires parallel computing power, because you don't want to sample all those Markov chains sequentially, but you rather want to sample them in parallel, each chain on its own processor, for example, and then occasionally um, apply specific exchanges, which are done in replica exchange. Furthermore, it is not immediately clear how to best choose the flatness of those increasingly flatter probability distributions. This flatness is expressed by a sort of temperature parameter, and the tuning of this temperature parameter is highly non-trivial. 
So our goal with Chainsail is to provide parallel computing resources on the cloud, as well as a fully automatic parameter tuning scheme. But all theory is gray. Let's look at this in practice. First, let's see whether we can sample a Gaussian mixture distribution of four mixtures in two dimensions with a single Markov chain. We provide an example for that with a little metropolis sampler and a readily implemented probability distribution. And we can call this here using a little script. Let's see what happens. We will draw around 10,000 samples. We have a good acceptance rate of maybe 55%. That's all good. And now the script plots the uh, mixer distribution and the samples. On the left-hand side, we have the uh, distribution we are looking for. So remember, this is a on-top view, essentially, of a two-dimensional mixture of four Gaussians. And um, so we have four modes, right? But turns out the Markov chain, as you can see on the right-hand side, essentially discovers only the mode on the very lower left. So this is somewhat unsatisfying. Now let's see how can we use Chainsail to improve on this. As the website says, all you need for Chainsail to work is to provide a Python module that defines the probability density and because we are using gradient-based sampling algorithms, its log probability gradient. Then you would essentially upload this probability density to the Chainsail web service, click a button, and Chainsail would, in the background on the cloud, start sampling your probability distribution with replica exchange, adapt the important temperature parameter automatically over the course of several optimization runs, and finally, there's a longer production run. The results of all those sampling steps can then be downloaded to your computer, where you would then stitch them together into an easy consumable NumPy array, and you can continue your basin analysis with hopefully representative samples from your multimodal probability distribution. So what do you need to do to make Chainsail work? Well, Chainsail needs to know your probability distribution, and you provide it in the form of a Python module that exposes an object called, in this case, Gaussian mixture, that has a method logprop, which is the log probability of your density, and a method logprop gradient, which is, well, the gradient of the log probability of your density. You then instantiate this object and assign it to a variable called PDF. You also define a variable initial states, which is a flat NumPy array that serves as the initial state of the parallel Markov chains. To formalize this, we provide in the chain cell helpers Python package the interface those objects have to conform to. So again, we need a logprop method and a logprop gradient. How you implement those is up to you. We do provide convenient wrappers around STAN and PyMC3 though. So if you're familiar with either STAN or PyMC3, there's very, very little you have to code up yourself. Just copy over your STAN or your PyMC3 model. Now let's say we have written a probability distribution that conforms to this interface and define our initial states accordingly. Then we, what we will do next is we will zip this file using, for example, the zip command. Voila. In the zip file, you could also include any data, for example, a CSV file or additional Python modules. Just try to keep the directory structure flat. Now that we have our probability distribution defined and zipped, let's go to the Chainsaw website. Before we can create a new job, we need to log in first. Let's see what happens here. Well, Chainsaw will ask you for um, your Google credentials, and this is not because you're interested in your private data or anything. This is really only to track you as a user within Chainsaw, so you can make sure that Chainsaw computing resources are not misused and that we can distribute the computing resources Tweak provides for free fairly among all users. Now that we are logged in, let's see how to create a new job. 
So on the create a sampling job page, we have a little form. We can give a unique name to our job. For example, my first mixture job. We can choose a range of parameters, the number of production samples, the maximum number of parallel Markov chains, chains we will simulate. And we obviously have to choose our distribution here. Let's upload it right here. Furthermore, if we use any Python dependencies, for example, NumPy, SciPy, we have to add them here in a comma separated list. If you click on more parameters, there's a few more advanced parameters, but we just let them at their default values for now. Then we're almost done. Let's click create job. And this will create a job entry in Chainsys database with all your job data. Upon clicking on view your jobs here, there's a table with all the jobs you ever launched. For now, your job isn't started yet. Who knows, maybe you want to start another one. We want to add another one before starting them all. But let's start our job by clicking the nice green start button. You will see the status changes to pending. And on the dash side, you can follow the completion of your job. On the lower right, we have log output. Shows a little bit what Chainsaw is doing on the back end. And once Chainsaw starts sampling, the two plots above will give you a little bit of information how sampling is going. On the top, we have the total negative log probability of all the replicas, of all the Markov chains together. And if this levels off or oscillates around some fixed value, then there's a good chance that you are sampling correctly, assuming that the acceptance rates of exchanges between neighboring replicas are reasonably high, say, uh, maybe at least 20% or something. After a while, Chainsaw will have finished sampling or probability distribution. You can see that the acceptance rates between neighboring distributions are in the range of somewhere between 20 and 30 percent, pretty much what we asked Chainsaw to do before, and that the ne total negative log probability fluctuates around a relatively constant value. Now let's download the results. Let's click the download button. There they are. To analyze the results, we will create a directory called, uh, for example, downloaded results. Enter that directory. We copy over the results from the downloads folder in our new directory and we unzip them. In this directory now, you will have the sampling results of all the optimization runs and of the production, right? So in this case, we had, what's that? Three optimization runs and one production run. Let's see what's in there. Now we have the um, samples, most importantly, in the samples directory here, which are batched. We want to concatenate them in a second. We have the uh, temperature schedule, which are the optimized parameters of replica exchange. We have some sampling statistics. Uh, for example, we can do something like this, which are the acceptance rate for the replica exchange algorithm, and a few other things. Now let's try to concatenate our samples to that end we provide a script called little on the nose concatenate samples. Let's see how we use this. Also because I kind of forgot. Well, the help string says we want to specify uh, two positional arguments. So the uh, simulation run, let's use our downloaded results. Let's check the production run for now. And an output file, let's call it chain sale samples dot npy. So this is going to be an umpire array. Great. Now in chain sale samples dot npy, we have our concatenate samples and we can now run a little script that plots these samples and compares them to the results of the single chain. Let's do this. I think that's the correct way to call this.
So again, on the left-hand side, we see the true distribution, which is what we are looking for. Again, four components in two dimensions. And the center, we have the results we previously obtained using a single Markov chain that only discovered one single mode. And on the right-hand side, we have the results obtained via chain sale. And we find that indeed chain sale is able to discover and correctly sample all four modes, showing that chain sale indeed does what it's supposed to do. Great. I hope that piqued your interest. If you want to learn more about Chainsail, feel free to check out our Chainsail resources repository, which has some additional documentation, some example PDFs, uh, some example interfaces to write your own probability distribution. Also, please have a look at the blog post my colleague Etienne wrote, which discusses analyzing the soft k-means clustering model in one dimension though for easy visualization using a single chain and also via chain sale. And finally, if you think chain sale could be useful for you, but it doesn't work quite out of the box, please do let us know, write us an email to support at chainsale.io and we would be happy to demo chain sale to you to help you fix any issues you might have.